Alright guys, uh, so today I'll be uh, coding what is now known as SignForge. It's, uh, it will be a command line tool for uh, signing files with new keys. Basically the idea is to move RHS to version based uh, signatures so that you would be so that people with older versions would not be able to join uh, key protected servers running newer versions. It's something that's been requested a lot and uh, before we go to 037 we thought that it would be a good idea to to get that done. So I'm overhauling the, the our system to be able to do this. I could find a good way to, to automate, automate uh, signature I'm making so I want to do as much as, uh, 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 as less by hand every time we release as possible so I'm uh, going to make a tool and it's going to be available as well at some point uh, on GitHub so it's going to be for free for everybody yeah, this one so I just made the repository made the solution I'm going to go ahead and uh, do do a little little programming. Some of you have, maybe have not seen, but we already made one tool available, and that's StringForge. It's uh, also on GitHub. Uh, you can download it uh, in uh, on this link that you see. So GitHub.com at ajvorobiev uh, slash StringForge. And what it does, it's uh, it's uh, allows you to work with uh, string XML files. Or maybe I can even demonstrate it a bit because uh, I noticed that not a lot of people know it. There's a there's a there's a thread on about it on uh, B forums. Uh, but one second. Just show a little bit of string forge. I think I make a Facebook post about it uh, also a bit later. But what it does, it's a tool we customly built uh, um, to deal with our own uh, string tables, which will later. Uh, we'll later make RHS string tables available to uh, to the public so that we can help translating to all the languages that you that you see here because we cannot do it ourselves and I can open a file or a folder that contains XML files for example we're just gonna go with A for F and it will load in a complete structure of the XML file. It will also report if I have any duplicate keys or something like this. But uh, for example in the tree here I can click on any of these uh, groups uh, starting with the project, uh, the package and the container to show all the keys that are contained there. And I have my main editing window uh, which allows me to work with the keys and then also I can work with them here Um, and by clicking on either of the structures, for example, I can display all the keys that are in the whole project, which is a shit ton, or just a single key at a time, or for example, just the keys that are in this package. Um, this tool also allows you to create, edit containers, uh, wipe translations, add keys. For example, I can add a key 
to this uh, to this container. Uh, it has a templating mechanism. Okay, now I saved it. Now I can create keys from templates so that I don't have to retype this this beginning part every time. Now the really cool thing is that um, uh, I can autofill. So if I type in orig the original language, which would be English in most cases, so I'll be typing in And uh, maybe you notice that the Russian gets translated automatically as well. So you get uh, Cyrillic lettering automatically. And you can see the key gets added to this container straight away. And the same thing happens if I then start uh, typing here, for example. It instantly gets changed. Uh, and I can see, well, I don't know, whatever, whatever happens. And I can save it. I can also convert a bunch of old CSV style, uh, a folder or, or a single file, a whole project which had CSV files and put it into one XML file and uh, do something with the old files as well. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is uh, Stringforge. It's been developed in the last month or so. It's uh, uh, pretty simple to use. I can, uh, for example, wipe translation that that wipes everything that's not English uh, and original, and I can fill missing from selected, and it will fill uh, using the English language all the missing languages that were there, so I can save it. And again, the Russian gets transliterated automatically. Uh, if I would create a new key which has the same name, for example in this one. You can see that I get straight away a violation of a duplicate key uh, happening. So yeah, this is Stringforge. Uh, it's a it's tool still in development. You can check it out on the, uh, on the Stringforge GitHub page. Uh, you can download the source code. It's all open source. You can tinker, do whatever you want. It's un released under MIT license. Um, and again, if you go to releases, uh, you can get the actually already packed and uh, executables, so not the source code. So that was uh, Stringforge. Today we're going to be making something called SignForge, again, under MIT license, so it will be open source, you can get it anytime you want. Uh, hopefully by the end of this session I'll be done with it, so it shouldn't be that, that difficult. So the idea is to write a tool which uh, would give in a folder with some PBO files, and uh, a new key name would generate uh, the private and public keys and then sign all the PBO files in that folder with this uh, with this key. This way we'll be able to release new keys with, uh, which, which with each and every um, new RHS release. Alright, so I'm going to start.
I missed this a little bit in character in the case we don't really know most of the languages. In fact, we actually know very, very few out of the list. So we, we don't have people who can do Portuguese, Italian, French, and, uh, and maybe they know the languages, but they don't do the translation. So. Yeah, the the common thing I do uh, specifically here. Uh, sometimes, if it wouldn't have been open source, maybe I wouldn't do it. But uh, here I decide, uh, since it's going to be available on GitHub, it's good to see uh, the code. And I did the same for StringForge. Uh, you can see that all methods and all all the things have proper comments. Okay, I got uh, so a thirty name. That's going to be the the name of the signature, the folder where you have the PBO files. Okay, let's see. So that's destination folder. That's where the public and private key will go after they've been generated. And what else do we need? We can also do a verify flag. So that we can use uh, DS check signatures then on all the files to make sure that everything is up to scratch. Uh, okay, remove flag. So the remove flag will then make sure that um, old signature file, all all old signature files will be uh, removed from the source folder. Okay, so if the argument is not provided, we want them, we will prompt them for it.
Okay, that looks like a good list. So first, we're going to do the validation of the arguments that are provided to the to the application.
Okay, so that will give us the source path source path that is passed into the main argument array. User joined your channel. User joined your channel. But nobody wants to talk.
Right, well, Mike should be working now. Yay. Hey. Sorry about that. To look what you write. Come on, Bernie, get into Sunday spirit. So if I run this application. It should throw the error now. Yeah. And that's good. User disconnected from your channel. User joined your channel. No. Nope. I was going to give you a mic. We can hear you now. Yay! No! It's all Cody and shit. Right. Right. Is this going to look pretty when it's done? No, it's going to look like you're a righteous hacker. Shit. So, black and white text. No. Why? Can't we have like a window or something? Uh, hopefully you won't. Nobody would need this except the computer. So, the idea is for it to be automatic. Fair diddles. I just hate command prompt. It scares me. What? Oh, you're so young. I don't know why. I think it's just because it's black and white. If it was in the... a bitch in program. <laughs> It's because you're so young. Yeah, in the early days we only had that. Yeah. See, Ubuntu's terminal's fine. It's just Windows command prompt. There's just something about it. True. Like I still remember when there were monochrome monitors. You could only see green and black, or blue and black. You'll have to speak up. Okay, I don't want to wake up my wife. Do <laughs> you remember when the monitors were monochrome, the computers? Green <laughs> and black, or blue and black? Wow. I think I used to have one of those, actually. Somewhere around a microcomputer. I still to this day have no idea how you use it. Yep. More to the point, I don't want to know. I even had a computer that you need 
two disks, one for the operating system and the other for the application that you wanted to run. <laughs> but that was really, really old. It was a laptop, by the way. A laptop? Yeah. Wow. But it was an eight, late 80s laptop. So pretty much it was a brick with a screen. Yeah, and in fact the screen was really small. I don't remember. It should have been about, I guess, at seven inches or something like that. Wow, that's tiny. I have to imagine that the computer was huge. I mean, the laptop was huge, but it uh, yeah. was really small. <laughs> Weird. Oh, the good old days. Yep. <laughs> I look at that, so pretty. It's all green and red and stuff. The only code I even care to know about is object code. Procedural language just annoys the fuck out of me. I think I just found the computer that I had after. Wait a second. I'm pretty sure it was this one or something close to that. Oh, nice. That's amazing. Looks like something like it's just being teared out of alien or something. Back when LCD screens were all the rage. Pretty awesome. Okay, so remove is done, verify is done. Now source path will throw if it's not provided. You hear weird noises, is the rabbit that is biting something? Okay, let's maybe make authority name and this in No, I want them to be typed in.
So, user input. And if after all of this, Such variable, very string, wow. So if authority name is nothing, then we throw it out. Because bitches can't be nothing. Off with it. Say that again. Off with it. That my mic, well, you should see my mic. Realize why it sounds so bad. <laughs> I've broken. There's a wire here in the middle. <laughs> to take a picture of it. So some more debugging maybe.
User joined your channel. Hey. Howdy. Sup. Doing some C sharp programming. Yo. He can live without it. Nope. Alrighty. Remove flags false. Verify flag false. Source path is set. Authority name. Cool. True, true. This will throw. Happy birthday, Crow Tiger Twitch. Rules true. So authority is being set. Puka. Mm-hmm.
Oh, I love resharper. All right. So, need to check stuff. Ryan, you're a, you're studying to be a programmer, right? Yes, I am. Watching this is just like an average day in school. Yeah, well, since I, I never studied uh, actually professionally programming, if you have any, let's say, uh, points or or comments, please feel free. Um. I don't, not really. <laughs> You're a much better programmer than me. It's about the only point I can make. Oh. I don't know. I miss. I miss sometimes not not uh, going for a for a software engineering uh, degree. Double major. Yeah, it's just, you know, there's so many things I miss on a very high level that I just have no clue about. And, you know, programming is one thing, but being a really software architect is something else completely. Well, I'm a, a senior, and you already know probably more than I do, so... Uh, yeah, no, I doubt it. But like, like yeah. we don't even work C sharp like at all. It's all Java and C plus plus and JavaScript. Java, really? C plus plus. Yeah. I'm not really surprised about, but Java. Yeah, it was kind of a nightmare the first year or two because we had to work with unix and, and you know c plus plus and it was just oh my <laughs> god once we moved to the java and we started using like actual ides it was just so much better you could get so much more so much quickly yeah what do you think um have you guys done classes on things like, uh, I don't know, com shit like that, parsers, antler, oh, so okay. something like this? Uh, they like my school offers a, a course on compilers, but I'm never gonna take that class. <laughs> shit, <laughs> like like never. It's so bad. Everything is in assembly. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah figures. No, but for example, like. Uh, because the next big challenge in programming uh, for us will be the config parsing. Ah. And maybe you have some ideas of how to go along with it. Because I, I, I want to no. do something elegant, but I haven't, I haven't really come up with the right idea. Uh, 
If someone yeah, can make I... a proper Photoshop parser for PAAs, I'll be amazed. That will never happen. Never happen. No. It's annoying having to put everything on JPEG and then go through text view. Might as well just do it straight from Photoshop. There used to be one. But yeah, then. It's it... Yeah, but. Made it... by uh, Kegadies, wasn't it? Yep. But it was. Uh... I do have it. It's, it's redone. terrible. Yeah, it doesn't work. I mean, it it it, it was works. Meant for Photoshop too, wasn't it? I don't remember or CS2 or something. But yeah, CS2. But it was the the point was that it uh, made corrupt <laughs> corrupt files. So Arma couldn't read them, or they were wrong or something. I don't I don't remember. They come out with well, those weird colors now. It worked for like. Arma one, didn't it? But no, no. I think it worked for OFP only, and after oh. that, that was it. That was the end of the gravy boat. Well, besides, it's not too bad. Bulldo Bulldozer does like ninety-eight percent of my conversions now. Alex, you do know the bulldozer converts uh, TGA files, right? Yeah. So it's if you have them assigned in O2 and then it should be a breeze. I just do it straight through taxi. I don't know why. It just works for me. I don't remember that though. But that that's what uh binary does uh, not binary, sorry. Bulldozer. It it does it automatically through text view as well, through the same DLLs. Oh. Interesting. User disconnected from your channel. Very sorry if my voice sounds a bit hoarse today. Are you sick as well? No, I just have a naturally hoarse voice sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I forgot what that was doing. So check sorry. the root. Okay, so directories are done. Okay. Okay, now I can actually do the fucking thing. Alex? Yes? Apparently, um, Bernard needs permissions to come into this chat room. User was moved to your channel. There you go, Bernie. Now, can you hear me? Yes. Does it sound better than before? Fuck yes. Okay. Yeah, I can also hear you better. The iPhone power. What are you doing? Ooh, what does an operator mean? Now you can operate. Shit. So operator, man. OK, 
Okay, so I got all the files. Okay, I can actually create this signature first. How does the this Okay, so the create key will should create the authority. Uh, now we need to copy the private and public keys to the destination folder. 
Let's see what this does anyway. Yeah, okay, so RHSB key and RHSB private key were created in the place where the sign forge is running. <sighs> That's nice. Okay, now I should check whether these files exist. If they don't, then abort. And if they do, then copy them to the destination folder. is B key. Okay, so if it's existing, then let's copy it to the destination path. If not...
How many computer science classes did you take? Hmm? How many, like, programming classes did you take? Uh, I had uh, a Java course in uni. It was like seven That's weeks. That's it? Yeah, the rest I just taught myself. But it's been like years of years of practice. Because, like, you know way more than, like, anybody at my level of computer science like seriously yeah but just wait till you work a bit you know like you do one year yeah. of work and you'll be way above that's, what i am that's that's kind of what everybody tells me is like 90 percent of what you learn is all on the job exactly no i do this for work you know i um my main my main field now is i'm i'm programming for space applications so I write c sharp code code mainly and the RHS code. That actually sounds a lot like my uh, my uh, software engineering assignment right now. We're making a, a Mars Habitat configuration program. Ooh, what does it do? Um, you just have to... Like, so there's like a grid, and uh, you have to make it so like all these habitat modules form a, a specific format basically that like works mm. it has like certain criteria you know like a, a sanitation module can't be next to a, a like you know food storage module or whatever mm. i don't know it's, it's just it's basically a puzzle cool wait okay why did this not work you have to calculate the most efficient path for gathering the modules and stuff like that so that means I get to use an A star search again. Yay! Yay! My favorite. Okay, so what the fuck is going on? Ah. Wait. No. Yeah, they're here. Yay! Okay, so they're nice and snug. Alright, so we have created our keys. Now we just have to sign. Is this for proper versioning with the keys and stuff? Yeah, basically to, to get all that crap. Um, so with every release, we would sign a new, uh, resign all the files with a with a key just for that release. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, people have been asking about it for a while, and it took some figuring out with our, uh, uh, let's say, with our new with the, with our server and how we're getting Jenkins to build everything. So now the test versions, so the ones we get internally, will not get signed. So, uh, I think. Or maybe they will. Yeah, I don't know. Don't really need to be, though. No, and they don't. That's the thing. And it's, you know, extra, it's kilobytes, but it's still extra shit that you'll have to download every time. Because imagine, every time one PBO gets rebuilt, all will have to be resigned. Because obviously the key does not work anymore if a public key is changed. So I don't know. I think we'll do it um, uh, just running it before we release a new version. So 
3.7 will now have its own keys. I did finish the uh, automatic torrent generation. So every time we do a release, a torrent is automatically built and then published on the server. Cool. Okay, let's see, then we need to delete. I think it's called B sign, right? What is it? I wasn't watching the stream. Uh, yeah, B sign files. Yeah, like the signature files that actually come with the PBO. Yeah, the, their extension is B sign. Okay, so if we if remove flag is set. But I know, I love C-sharp though. I mean, fuck, I I can't work with C++ anymore. After this, yeah, uh, C-sharp is beautiful. I feel the same way with Java. Yeah, After I mean... Switching from C++ to Java, it's... Java is fine. Java is, is well, the, the same as this. C-sharp is a, a huge improvement over Java, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. But it's all to do, for me, it's the IDE. Man. Oh. 
Visual Studio. Holy shit, dude. And it's for free yeah, now. Yeah, get it for free. It's, it's for free for everyone. Oh, it's free for free? Yeah, the, the professional version is now open. Well, not open source, but it's free for everyone. It's the community oh, edition. Damn it. No, they, they canceled the, what, what they used to be Express, and they just made a professional available for everyone. It's awesome. I didn't even know that. It's amazing. Uh, only if you're like if you have an organization that's more th e even for commercial purposes, eh? So it's not just for free applications. If you have a company that has under like two hundred people and you make under one million revenue or something, you can use it for free commercially. Which is insane. Wow. Microsoft do have a little bit of good in their hearts after all then. Yeah, they, they changed their ways completely. They they also released .NET framework as source the source code. Nice. And Windows 10 will be free for yeah. Windows 8 and Windows 7 users, which is also pretty awesome. Yeah. .NET uh, yes. going open source is a major thing because now it can be rebuilt for uh, for Linux-based machines. Because before that, we only had this thing called Mono, which is basically a community-driven uh, .NET, uh, let's, just, let's say, framework for Linux, and Microsoft would never support it before. Uh, but it was always behind, so whenever .NET would update, you would have to wait quite a while to be able to run uh, executables on Linux. But now, .NET can be rewritten, or basically compiled for Linux as well. It's amazing. So does that mean we can get finally get rid of wine? Yeah, probably. But you oh, you'll yes. keep drinking forever though. <laughs> well, I'll have a glass of wine when they get rid of wine. It annoys the fuck out of me. It's a good program though. But um, Microsoft also brought out. A new thing called DreamSpark, and students from authorized colleges and schools can get their stuff for free. That in includes operating systems as well. I have Windows 8.1 that's from my college through DreamSpark, so that's pretty good. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they're doing cool things, and you know, I think they're just trying to get people on board with them once more. You know, everybody was just so unhappy with Microsoft uh, for many years already. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they got rid of the previous CEO. He was just absolutely terrible. He's a polymer. Yeah. He was funny. He, he was funny, but he was shit. <laughs> you not have both. You know, I prefer the new guy who's a bit more serious and a bit more down to earth. I don't know his name though, but he, he seems like he's got his head on his neck at least. You'll have to speak up. It's Staya, Staya, Nadella. Ah, yeah, that's him. I Whatever the name it sounds. It's in Indian, so. Yeah. But he's pretty cool. I like him. He's fucked up a couple of times, but I don't think that was all his fault somehow, so. But they really need to change. Was that or die? Say again, over. That Microsoft had to change because it was or that or die. You cannot yeah. hear me? I'm almost hitting the mic. Yeah. I do like Windows 10 at the moment. The way it's going is pretty good. DirectX 12 seems very exciting at the moment. Apparently you can combine graphic card brands, you can have an AMD and an NVIDIA card in the same computer and it really doesn't matter. Which is pretty cool.
See, look, Bernard. Proper error reporting in the fucking code, unlike Delphi. Yep. It doesn't just highlight a problem and say there's something wrong with it, it actually gives you specifically what's wrong with it. But then you miss all the fun? All the hours oh, looking for it? damn right. But you what's the point of that? What's the point of Delphi, I suppose? Exactly. It's to be deliberately hard for you to do anything without getting errors. No, but AI is coding quite fast with it. Yeah, but even still. You need to get used to it. I think, Alex, I think you should have done this all in assembly language. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just to make my life easier, right? Yep. It's all about speed. Procedural language is not going to help you. MS-DOS was written entirely in assembly language. Well, and how useful is MS-DOS to you right now? Not very. Exactly. Well, it is still... Goes to show high-level programming is better. In the early days, a lot of video games used to be written in assembly language. Yeah. Well, nowadays they still do some parts of them. Make them more efficient. Especially for the console game. That's why Armor 3 is so crap. I said nothing. I would shoot myself if I had to make entire operating system in assembly. I think I'd probably do more than shoot myself. I'd probably gouge my own eyes out with a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> See, so we only very lightly touched on assembly language when I did a computer in college. Um, I really like the idea of doing assembly language, but we had to learn Delphi instead. It's just, oh, worst IDE ever. I I had the displeasure, or should I say pleasure, of working with one of the first objective uh, languages, which is called Lisp. Holy shit. That was in school. Um, so it's, yeah, it's a common Lisp. It's, it's a language from like 1958 or some shit. I haven't even heard about it. He would. You can you just. Sorry. Carry on. I'll just type in the uh, Twitch chat the type of fucking uh, functions that you have to write. Alrighty. We shall look forward to it. But honestly, I, I don't know where anyone would be without Microsoft Visual Studio, if I'm honest. It's pretty awesome. So you had to declare every last one. Yeah, so things, they or? they didn't have operators, for example, so you couldn't write two plus three plus three times two. You had everything was a function, even mathematical operators. Oh well, that's, that's painful. How C++ works, so. Yeah. Yeah, well, you, no, no, but you can write it as an operator. I mean, yes, in the background it does, but if you write down three times two, it's it understands it, right? You don't have to write oh, so you mean times and then the arguments to this times function. Oh, oh, god. <laughs> yeah. Now imagine writing like aerodynamic formulas this way. This was nightmare. You might as well have just done it. You had. Oh shit, what's that called? Is it... Uh, it's something like Polish something, isn't it? The the format of that? Polish notation. I don't know. It, it, yeah, it's, I know, it's I, I know of Hungarian notation. Yeah, but that's but... Polish notation, that one, I think. Not quite sure. I had to learn that in the first computer science course I took. I had to do reverse Polish notation. I don't remember ever doing normal Polish notation. Yeah, it's, it's reverse Polish notation. Argument. Actually, uh, let's see if I can find something. Oh wait, no, no, it's not. Because the uh, the operator precedes the operands. Yeah. Didn't. Wait. Reverse Polish I'm, notation. I'm all screwed up now. 
the operator um, proceeds the operands. Ah, oh, please. Ah, uh, maybe I still have it. So many files. I want to cry. Yeah, there we go. There's some lisp. Yeah. UML. <laughs> this is Lisp. I miss the UML. Wait, you actually model this shit before you do it? Yeah, we had to. This was a class. This was a knowledge based oh. engineering. You don't wing it like normal programmer, what? No, I do. Normally I do. <laughs> Although I do see the advantages of modeling. Like, I, for yeah. example, I drew the model for a new website. I mean, it sounds even weird for a website, but then I thought about it like a program, and it's actually helping me quite a bit. So, for example, you can see here on line, like, line 80, a possible mathematical calculation that could be just so much easier. And just do a normal lot of programming. For software engineering to do a, a fucking SRS report, a software requirement specification. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Cartoon storyboards of everything. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, at work I have to do something like this. Uh, anyway, so this is. Haven't even touched programming yet. Really? Nope. I think that's similar to what we had to do in our computing course as well. We used to have to write out an analysis of everything that we were going to th go through, like the feasibility study and everything like that, and it was just, can't I just program it? Yeah, I remember that they spent just designing the database, like, uh, <laughs> weeks. If you don't design the database properly, then you can be quite screwed up. Alrighty. Uh, I'm almost done. Can we have a program called Starforge next? So what are we gonna... yeah, yeah. If it does something. <laughs> Just because, you know, I just wanted to do a little wink at any code all ones. Just have any program it wants to do and call it Starforge. Because I'm so totally not a Star Wars nerd at all. <laughs> so... Off the subject, Facebook continues to baffle me. What what baffles you? Facebook. Oh. That's an awesome website. I wrote something in French. It does not come up with C translation. Someone writes something in English, it comes up with C translation. The fuck? It, it's because it's an expression, I think. You are meaning the C magnifique? Yeah, I said C magnifique, and you'd yeah. expect it to come up with C translation, and then Damien comes along and says nice, and it says C translation. Wow, well, yeah, it's. <laughs> oh, that's weird. <laughs> I didn't get it. And it translated as night. 
Say again, over. That translate the Damien Radka nice to nice. Yeah, it's just. It is, yeah, awesome. At least you know now that nice means nice. Yeah, it's, it's always handy to know. You know, just in case I don't know my own language. Of the I, Bing translation. I know a lot of people in my area don't know how to speak English, but that doesn't mean that I don't know how to speak English. You live in England, no? Yes. <laughs> nice. English Especially. people can't speak English. Nice! Where's Basti? I miss his sexy accent. Yeah, I love the German accent. So sexy. I think he's drowning in his own phlegm right now. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. So just a regular Sunday then? Oh yeah, for Germans at least. Well, Germans cannot make noise on Sunday, so maybe he cannot even get on TeamSpeak. Got Can to I make the program, time? yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, well. Okay, I gotta finish really quick because I gotta eat. So, um, let's see. So, we created signatures, blah, blah, blah. It's time to sign. But isn't it half past seven there? Yep. You eat so late. Date. Hmm? Have dinner at 12 or 1 or 2? Okay. Yeah, I'm not Spanish, yo. Neither do I. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm not Catalan. Yeah, but in, here in Finland we also eat at that time sometimes. Yeah, but uh, it's like, isn't it like daytime where you are continuously? I don't know. Polar circle? I don't know anymore. It is for one month of the year, isn't it? Well, now I think we have about... Now it's dark all well, the time. I'm not sure, yeah. Well, no, not really. I know Christmas it is, but not now. Now I think we have like seven or eight hours of light. I'm not sure. Change so fast. Then it's suddenly... It's done at 4 a.m. It's something really weird. I can't get used to it. I'm gonna check it what time does the sun rise. Now the sun rises at 7 and sets at 6. Oh, 12 hours. So. Fair enough. Alright. Private key file name, file to sign file name. Be right back.
And I'm back in the room. All right. Okay. Let's see if this shit works. Yes. E. Even though there's a delay on this thing. Yeah, hooray, it does not work. Fuck. Yeah, now it works. All right, all right. Now, how does this verify thing work? Check their keys there. Okay. So source folder and uh, destination folder. User disconnected from your channel.
User joined your channel. Can you hear me now? Yep. You're quiet yeah. though. The the phone bit crazy. Are you holding your phone to your mouth like Paris Hilton or something? Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I'm not sure if this DS signature shit is working. I don't know what's going on. Ah. Yeah. I forget, yeah. Yeah. Wait, was to forget in German? And by that. Forgetting that German? You yeah, have joined your channel. I don't know how to say hello in Polish, but hi. Dzień dobry. Whatever he said. You haven't said uh, good afternoon or something like that? It's, it's some type of word with no vowels in it. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Or that. Can you say hi, Polly? Jane Dobry. Jane Dobry. I'm afraid the rest of my vocabulary consists of not so nice words. <laughs> Uh, they, um, as I'm usual. <laughs> suddenly uh, tempted to go Dobry Vorcha. I don't know what the frig it means, but okay. It means. <laughs> I remember the Dobry Vorcha. It was in Russian. Huh? I think it's Russian, Dobry Vorcha. I'm not sure. It means uh, <laughs> good evening. Ah, it's, it's, sort of. very, it's very similar to Polish. It's Dobry uh, Vorcha. Yeah. I, I remember trying to learn Russian from YouTube at one point, it was too hard for me. Uh, yeah, and if you want to speak short, uh, just say cześć. Say what now? Cześć. Cześć? Uh, more or less. <laughs> I, I, good, good enough. I learn most of my Russian from Arma these days. Like, stoy is stop, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in some words, uh, Russian is very similar to Polish. In others, not much. And Polish is very, hmm, well, it's a very specific language for the Slavic family of languages. In ways, it's very unique, and you won't find any similarities with other Slavic languages. Basically, it's useless. <laughs> Harsh. Basically, it's probably the most difficult Slavic language. Because it has no other similarities to anything. Well, to check. No? Yep. But hey, if you learn it, you're a badass. But isn't it close to Czech? Uh, no, not at all. Um, maybe a bit in some words, but. Uh, um, check. Nah, no. But, it, but, but even funny are uh, minorities languages in Poland. Oh my God! Even we don't understand them. <laughs> I don't understand. That's why I rather Swedish. An easier language. What? Swedish. Uh, Swedish. Uh, Svenska. Never learned it, to be honest. <laughs> and it what? might be difficult. Um, 
have a family in Denmark and Danish is oh oh this is a good one. <laughs> well, it's uh, Swedish. It's almost niche. Like Swedish, Swedish Norwegian, and Danish are almost the same thing. Hello, is he? Well, or Chinese. I, I had a Swedish masterclass because apparently I was really good at French, and apparently that entitles me to learn Swedish. Uh, okay. No. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, apparently Swedish is really fun to learn. Swedish is like a mixture of French and English. Yeah. But using the <laughs> Germanic English, like, like in Catalan. Uh, well, if you will listen some Danish, it seems that it's a mix of uh, Swedish, probably German. Norway, uh, German, English, and God only knows what else. No, the Danish. Danish, it's Swedish, but it's spoken like a German. But if you write it, the grammar uh, and everything, it's practically Swedish. So basically, Danish is angry Swedish. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> And Norwegian is exactly the same as Swedish, but written a bit slightly different. No. And then you have Finnish that it doesn't resemble to anything. So completely the same, oh, yes. but not really completely different. <laughs> no, the Finnish is completely different. The one that is close is the Danish or Norwegian Swedish. Well, probably I will broke my tongue. You sound like you're underwater. Really? Yes. He was diving. And now? You sound fine now. Well, uh, as always. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, shitty PC mic is shitty PC mic, no? Yeah, don't blame the PC if it's the problem with the mic. It's like punching a monitor for the PC problem. Or the gamer. Uh, but the mic is part of the PC. <laughs> yes, but it annoys me when people punch the monitor when it's the computer that has the problem. Punch the computer. <laughs> but it's more expensive usually. I sounded Irish. Yeah, you did. Fuck. Oh, I'm turning into an Irish person. Potato, potato, potato. Well, yeah, the happy you don't sound like Scottish. <laughs> Thankfully, I can't do a Scottish accent. Yeah, we will not understand anything. It's not that bad. It's worse than Northern English, in my opinion. Hey! I'm in the Northwest. That kind of counts. Can I almost understand anything? The worst one is the Scouse accent, okay? It is the worst. It drops your IQ by about 40 points. Honestly, listen to the Scouse accent and you'll know what I mean. Well, I... Well, listen, I once tried to watch uh, train spotting and uh, without uh, uh, any subtitles and I quickly turned the subtitles on. <laughs> I couldn't understand anything. <laughs> These gods. I had some issues understanding the English of the northern part of Newcastle. Why are you man? No way it's man. really weird. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have to start <laughs> learning how to speak a Newcastle accent, or Geordie as they call it, because I'm going to Newcastle in six months. That's going to be fun. Geordie Shaw. Oh. TV programs of the UK, ladies and gentlemen. Geordie Shaw. Don't watch TV. Uh huh. I don't plan to watch any TV if there's that sort of shit on these days. Uh, I don't understand what they do on TV. So. Sorry? I don't understand anything that they say in TV. So. <laughs> I don't have that issue. Hey, okay, no, have this is interesting. Go on, they speak on. strange languages in TV. Have you noticed they always breathe really loudly when, they, when they're in movies? It's like, <gasps> we gotta do this! <gasps> okay. No, that's honestly how they sound in movies. It's really hard to understand anything they're saying because they're breathing too freaking loud half the time. What kind of movies are you talking? Action movies, mostly. Ah. Well, I remember what kind of action? 1990s action movies, everyone used to speak really clearly and now they just puff all their words out as if they're out of breath all the time. 
It's called good acting. No, it's called very terrible acting. Hey, you have to sound Mr. like Brown. you're breathing really loudly all the time. You're a shit actor. <sighs> <sighs> well, are you good for another game of 